I'd like to start off by thanking you for buying a new Honda Civic. Now, in this uh, handover video, we're going to look at the, the features, uh, kind of the buttons on the outside of the car, the inside of the car associated with the technology, and of course, the things you'll need to look out for within maintenance. When it comes to unlocking and locking your Civic, all you need to do is use your remote. So in the middle position, we have an unlock button. So when we press that, it will unlock the car so I can open the door. And when we want to lock the car, just simply press the top button. Now we have another couple of almost hidden features on here. So the car's locked at the moment, but what we can do, we can get it to fold in the door mirrors for us. So all we do, we'd press the lock button and then we press and hold it a second time. This will wind in the door mirrors for us. Now, if we unlock the car and press that unlock button again, it will wind the windows down for us. So this is particularly useful on a warm day when we're approaching the car to let that heat out of the cabin. Now, what you'll notice is the door mirrors haven't actually unwound at this point because we haven't opened the door. So if we do, you'll see that that door mirror is now wound out, ready for you to carry on driving. On the locking procedure, if we press it once, it locks the car, but we've forgotten to put the windows up, just press it again and hold it. And at any point you want the windows to stop for any reason, just take your finger off the remote. Under the bonnet, there are a number of items that you just need to keep a regular check on. So first of all, we do need to open the bonnet. Down by the, the driver's right foot, you'll see a little lever. We'll give that a pull and of course the bonnet is now open. When we get to the front of the vehicle, what you'll find is slightly to our left of the, the centre is a little lever that we can just push across to release the catch. And then we can pop the bonnet stay up. Now, the items that you're going to want to keep an eye on, working from the left hand side is your screen wash fluid. So that has a blue cap on it. Working across, you'll see the uh, reservoir for the coolant for the engine. The next point along is for the brake fluid. So again, just keep an eye on the levels there, just as the coolant you would do. And then we have our dipstick for the oil. Now, we recommend that you check your oil, particularly in the, the first you know, few thousand miles, every time you fill it with fuel, because we know that the engine oil will be warm and you'll be on a flat surface. So you can check the oil level there. Whereas the coolant, of course, you would check that when the engine is cold. Now, we do have a 12 volt battery uh, just on the right hand side of the vehicle. So now we've checked the levels of the fluids under the bonnet, and of course, if needed, topped any of those up with the appropriate fluids. What we need to do now is close the bonnet and just take out the bonnet stake, click it into place, and the best way to close the bonnet is just from a relatively shallow height, just let it close under its own weight. Now, those are the items that we can look at from a maintenance at home point of view. But of course, your Civic is going to need regular servicing. So the schedule for your car is 12 months or 12 and a half thousand miles. And of course, pop into your local Honda dealer who will be delighted to carry out that service for you. Right, so now I'm in the car. Oh, first thing I want to do is make sure that the seat, steering wheel, and seat belt in the right position before we drive off. So I'm a bit too far away, so I'll pull the bar up at the front. Maybe one more. That's good. So I can get good pressure, good movement on the pedals. That's good. Uh, I'd like to go a little bit higher, so I'll raise that uh, up a little bit. Yep, that's nice. And a little bit more upright. So that feels like a good seating position for me. Now the head restraint. So we have movement on here we can move that up or back down I think it was pretty good as it was and we've also got the ability to move this forwards so again I think it was pretty good where it was so as I'm driving it's not actually touching but we're really close so that's a good position to be in now we'll put our seatbelt on so I think yeah, that might be a little bit high, so on the B pillar we can actually adjust that. Yeah, 
in that lower position, that feels good to me, so it's now the steering wheel. We have a lever, we can release that, and we can go pretty much anywhere we want to, where it feels good, about there, lock it off again. So now we're all good to go. Now that we've got our seat and seat belt adjusted, we'll go through the procedure for actually getting moving. So, keys in the ignition, we pop it through the accessory position to ignition, and obviously we can fire the, the car up. Because it's an automatic, we need a foot on the foot brake, and that'll allow us to take it from park, a little button at the, the front, we just flip that up, it'll go through reverse, through neutral, into D, ready to drive off. And of course, if you want a bit more acceleration, you can pop it into uh, sport mode. So we've got S denoting that there, either of those. Anytime you want to switch between the two, uh, you can do that while you're driving, not a problem at all. I'll just pop it back into park for the moment. But that's our, uh, our gear shifting all sorted out. Um, because this has got the, the CVT operation, what you can do as well, you can actually uh, use the paddles behind the steering wheel to encourage uh, a rev change as we're driving along in the sort of seven speed CVT mode. Right by the gear shift, we've got our brake hold and electronic parking brake. So I'm just going to put my seatbelt back on again. Now, before I drive off, I personally want to press my brake hold and put that on because what this is going to do for me, it means I don't actually need to use the electronic parking brake while I'm driving. So if I was in D, driving off, come to some traffic lights, use my foot brake to slow me down, come down to zero miles an hour, the car actually holds my brakes on for me, using hydraulic pressure at all four corners of the car. And as soon as I want to drive away, I just tap on the accelerator, drive away, and it releases the brakes for me. If I didn't want to use the brake hold, of course, I could do it the traditional way and pull up on the parking brake to apply it and push down on it to release the parking brake. Now, on the left-hand side of the shift lever, we have another couple of buttons, both relating to furthering your uh, economy of the car. So the Econ button, that will soften the throttle response. So as a driver, you'll need to use more throttle movement or accelerator movement, uh, which encourages us to drive more economically, which will improve fuel economy and lower our emissions as well. What it also does, it will increase the efficiency of things like air conditioning and cruise control. So a great feature to have on, you can select that and deselect it at your choice. Further up on the console, we have the idle stop button to turn it off. So the default is for this to be on because again, it will save you fuel. So the way that this works is when you're driving along and if you come to a stop, it may actually pause the engine. So at a junction, in a traffic jam, uh, waiting at an island, it can actually pause the engine for us. And as soon as we want to get going, pop in on our foot on the accelerator, it will restart the engine for us. You could also get this in a manual as well. And again, as soon as you want to drive off, it will restart the car. So no need to do anything with that at all. It's on by default. That button there is to physically turn it off. So on the right hand side for the driver, just in front of their armrest, we have some buttons controls. Now, right at the, the top of there, we have the button, which when we press it, will electronically fold in the door mirrors and obviously fold them back out again for us, nice and easy. When it comes to adjusting the angle of the mirrors inside those door mirrors, we have a little selector switch. When we slide it to the left, it'll actually allow us to adjust the left-hand mirror by the little four-way pad underneath it, slide it through the centre position, then over to the right, and it will allow us to adjust the driver's mirror, obviously, once we've got our seating position correct. When both are set, just slide that selector back into the middle position. Below that, we have a little rocker switch, so we can unlock or lock the doors from inside the vehicle. Underneath that, we have the isolator for the electric windows. So when we've pressed that and we have a little illumination in the switch, that means that only the driver's window can be sent up or down. When there's no light on there, everybody has individual control of their individual windows. On this car, all four windows are auto up and auto down. So we have a couple of positions. We can push down for a little bit of movement or push it all the way down to send the window automatically all the way down. And exactly the same is true on the way up. So a little pull for a little bit up on the window and all the way up to send the window right the way up to the top for us. Brilliant for convenience. 
On the steering wheel, there are some controls, there are some behind the steering wheel, and also some by my right knee. So we'll cover those off for you. So by my right knee, we have the button to activate and deactivate the parking sensors. So front and rear are the sensors on this car. And when there's a little green light illuminated in the switch, that means they're on and they're active. To the right hand side of that, we have a button to turn off collision mitigation braking system. This is a, a safety feature. I would strongly recommend that that's left on, um, but that is the, the button just to the right of parking sensors, should you wish to turn that off. Underneath that, we have a button to turn on and also off the lane departure warning and road departure mitigation. Just like parking sensors, when this is active, there's a little green light on there just to let you know it's fully operational. Now, what this will do is on lane departure warning, it's looking for dotted lines on the road. And if we get a little bit too close to those and the car thinks we're going to cross one of those without indicating, it can give me visual, audible, and even tactile warnings to let me know I'm getting a bit close to those lines. However, road departure mitigation is working on solid lines because they could be oncoming traffic, so more dangerous than crossing a dotted line. In that instance, the car can actually apply braking to individual wheels to bring you back into lane. Brilliant feature. And the, the final button, bottom left of that little suite of buttons, is to reduce the effectiveness of our vehicle stability assist system. And part of that is traction control. Really the only time you might want to turn that off is if you were stuck in shallow mud or snow and you, know, you couldn't get in traction, you might need to turn that off to get going. But as soon as you're moving, turn that back on again. Behind the wheel, we've got the, uh, the stalks. So on the right hand side, we have the stalk for the wipers. And on the left, we've got for lights and indicators. So on the right hand side, if I pull the complete stalk sort of in the upward direction, it'll give me a single wipe of the windscreen. If I push it down from the relaxed position, it goes into auto. So this is where the car uses the information from the rain sensor on the screen to determine how fast the wipers need to go and as the driver, I can actually adjust the sensitivity of that, literally by just adjusting this little dial here, sort of in the middle of the stalk. If I wanted a fixed wiper speed, I've got low and high as the next two positions down. For clearing the screen at the rear, again, we can just twist the very end. We've got intermittent and a fixed on position. And again, we've got washers at the back. We would actually put that in a full position away from us uh, to clear the rear screen and to clear the front screen we'd actually pull the stalk towards us. So everything we need to do for front and rear wipers is all on that right stalk. Now if we move to the left hand side this is where we've got it for lights and also indicators. So the default position is auto. The car has auto lights to, to look after us and this is where our high beam support system will actually operate as well. Uh, and this is brilliant. So the car will actually go automatically from its dip beam to a full beam if there's no vehicles ahead, giving you greater visibility. And as soon as it recognises tail lights or headlights, there will be different distances it's looking for, but uh, it will recognise those and it will turn it back down to dip beam for you. So a really great feature. If you wanted to be fully in control though, you can actually push it physically into the side light position or onto your dip beam if you didn't want to use auto. But the natural position I would leave them in is in auto. It looks after it for me. Now, if I wanted to give a flash of the lights to let somebody know I'm here on the road, I'd just pull the stalk towards me and it will give me a flash of my LED lights, nice and visible to people. From a fog light point of view, we can turn the, the front and the rear fog lights on from the center dial, just rotating those away from us. And obviously to turn those off, we actually bring those back in. So fog lights, headlights, auto position and high beam support system all off this left hand stalk. And of course, indicators. If I just push it to the first position, it'll give me three flashes to indicate to the right. Push it down, it'll give me three flashes to the left. But if I was pulling off a junction of a motorway or a dual carriageway, I might want to put it in the, the fixed position, which will cancel either when I push it back up or when the, the steering lock has noted I've made a turn and I'm now straight again. Moving forwards, on the face of the steering wheel, we have some, some, some finger controls. So on the left hand side, at the, the bottom, we have the ability to, to make and receive phone calls. 
and also allowing us to use the microphone in the uh, the car as well. So in a moment we'll talk about the uh, the Kinect system, but we could use this to actually talk to our uh, Kinect system. Maybe if we've got our uh, iPhone or Android phone connected, we could use Google or Siri to do some of the commands on the phone, or we could actually make our calls hands-free. Just above that, we have an information button, and this will allow us to scroll through a number of different features to bring up in front of us for music, telephone, trip distance, all those kind of things. Um, we can then enter those, and we'd use this little pad on the left-hand side. This will also help us to scroll through when we're on audio, different radio stations, or different folders if using music on a USB. Then just above that, we have uh, plus and minus. Obviously, this is uh, for volume when we're listening to the radio, uh, our music on there, or through our phone, whatever format we're listening to. If we wanted to, we could use it from the dial, but the easiest thing, hands are on the steering wheel, we just use the plus and minus. Now on the right-hand side, we've got some of our advanced safety features. So first thing we need to make sure, in order to use these, is that we've pressed the main button. Unless the main is pressed, you cannot use any of these. So that's the first thing. And then in the meters in front of you, you'll see ACC and LKAS. So Adaptive Cruise Control and Lane Keeping Assist. That means they're available to us. That doesn't mean they're actually on yet. So what we can do is we can cycle through a number of things. So I'm just gonna focus on this LIM button. If we press LIM, which is for limit, it'll take us through our speed limiter. And if I wanted to set a speed limit at 30, I'd just, I'm in limiter now, I'd go onto the, uh, the plus or the minus. It, because we're stationary, the starting point is 18. So I just keep my finger on there, it's gone to 30, and now that is my speed limiter set to 30 miles an hour. So through acceleration, unless I go 100% full throttle, we're not going to go over 30 miles an hour. If we press limit again, it gives you the intelligent speed limiter. So this uses the cameras at the top with traffic sign recognition to read speed signs on a circle sign. So if you get a temporary one on a yellow background, which is rectangular, it won't pick those up, but anywhere there's a, a normal speed sign. And when we've pressed set, this will now look for the speed sign, pop it onto the dashboard of the car and limit me to that speed that we're in at the time. Really, really useful. So now we're back at the ACC, that gives us the ability to actually now use the intelligent adaptive cruise control. Now this is the feature that takes our traditional cruise control and makes it usable for everyday life now. So traditionally with cruise control, if you set it to 60 miles an hour, but there's a car in front doing 50, you'd have to lower it down or cancel it, then resume it, all a bit of a faff. So now what we do when we're driving along, we would get to the speed we want, we'd press the set button at the bottom and it would set it at that speed. However, if we were doing 50 but we're on a motorway, we could actually increase that to 70. Because what it will do, it will actually see the vehicle in front because we have a radar system on here. And it will not allow us to get closer to the vehicle in front than the seconds worth of gap that we've set. Now on this car, on the right hand side, we have um, one, two, three and four bars. They're roughly like a one, one and a half, two and a three second gap between us and the vehicle in front. What it will also do is predict if people are going to cut in into your lane because it's using all of the cameras on the car. So we have predictive cut in as well, which makes it even smoother when we're driving. So it doesn't have to get really hard on the brakes when somebody pulls in front of us. And because this is an automatic transmission, we have low speed follow as part of the adaptive cruise control as well, which means this function will work all the way down to zero miles an hour. Underneath this uh, selection of buttons here, we've got the, uh, the button for lane keeping assist. So when we press this, we'll get confirmation we've selected it by seeing some sort of dotted lines on the meters in front of us, but they're hollow. So when we're doing above roughly 45 miles an hour, and it, the car can actually see the painted lines on the road, those lines will go solid. And what it will do, it will give me a little bit of assistance in keeping centered in the lane. Also, if I'm getting a little bit close to uh, one of the, the lanes, whether it be left or right, actually it'll 
encourage me a little bit more central because we've got electric power steering it'll bring me back into the center of the car of course this doesn't mean you can drive with your hands off the wheel uh, you do need to have your hands on the wheel it's just to give you extra assistance to actually reduce again the fatigue of driving on those dual carriageways and motorway situations so to get the perfect temperature inside the car our climate control features are just down here so first of all, we have our on off button. Now this is for the actual fan itself. So now we can see turning it on, we've got 21 degrees in the top corners of our connect screen. Um, I'll just turn that off for a moment. Next button along is our recirculate. So what this will allow is just the air inside the cabin to keep being temperature controlled and dehumidified if we've actually got the air conditioning on. When the orange or amber lights not actually on there that means we've got fresh air coming in so the choice is yours next button along it says rear and you've got a picture representing the rear screen and also the door mirrors so this will activate the heater elements in all three of those to defrost them de-ice them whatever then you have the button with front written on it what this does it puts all of the efforts into the climate control to actually defrost defog that front screen now, either side of this, we'll just turn our fan back on again, uh, we can change the temperature with these dials on the right-hand side for the driver and the left-hand side for the passenger. Now, we've got 17 and a half over there for the passenger, 23 for the driver. If I'm in here by myself, I can actually push the sync button and it will take both of them to 23 degrees and I control them together. Now on the right hand one we have push for auto. What auto does, it automatically looks at the temperature I want and figures out the best ventilation system to achieve that for me and also the best fan speed. So we've got those explained down there. Just above it we have fan speed for down and up, which is great. So I can do everything down here. But if I press the climate button, that brings up a complete screen here where I can turn my compressor on or off I've got the different modes for where we want the actual air to come through the vents and again I can change the fan speed using these controls here. So we have the ability to use this screen but also the buttons down here and to get rid of it either a timer will set it off or press the climate control button again and it will bring back our home screen for Connect. So now we're actually looking at the, the home screen for the Connect infotainment system. We can see we've got various tabs that we can actually use actually on the screen. And we've got some physical keys on the right hand side we can use for those most sort of popular features. From this main screen, we're going to take these one by one and give you a bit of an introduction to, to what they're going to do for you. So top left hand corner is navigation. When we go into navigation, if you've used a Garmin type system before, it's going to be 95% the same. However, we have put some extra Honda detail in there for you. So we have our mapping, it's ready to navigate, and we press the uh, magnifying glass, and what we can see is we can put a postcode in or a, a place we want to go to, but we've also got Honda dealers. So if you were wanting to go to a local dealer in an area you're not used to, you can go into there, all the addresses are preset in for you. However, one of the things a lot of people like to do is set the home address. So the easiest way is to press the go home button. And because there's nothing in there at the moment, we've got three choices. We can enter my address by using maybe postcode or physical address. We can use the current location where we are now. So if I was on my driveway, that would be perfect. And choose from recently found destinations. So I'm going to assume I'm on my driveway, press use current location, and that's it stored. The next time I'm away from home, press the go home button, it will navigate me back home. Really, really easy. So from the home screen, I could have pressed navigation or actually pressed the map button on there. It would take me exactly to the same place. So the next feature down is phone. First thing we need to do though is make that Bluetooth connection. So I'll take my phone and I'll press, I'll press telephone on this side, could have pressed phone on there and it says that no phone is paired, would I like to add one? So, yes please. Um, it tells me to go into my Bluetooth, so I'll open up Bluetooth on my phone, and what we need to do is actually search for a new phone. So, let's just tap on that, continue, because we're discoverable, and we can see iPhone. So if you have a name for your phone, that's what will pop up there. So there's a code on there, just make sure it's the same code on the phone. Yes, it is, so I press pair on my phone. 
There we go. Priority device settings, fantastic for my phone. So making sure that this is the priority phone. And now we can see my phone's connected. We have Bluetooth at the top and also the signal strength. So now we've actually got the phone connected. We can make and receive calls hands-free using the buttons on the steering wheel. And the next one down is settings. So in there, we can personalize this system to us, whether that's audio settings, system settings, which is about connect, vehicle settings about the way that's going to operate, or even Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connections. So one thing I will just uh, point out is in vehicle, we've got our deflation warning system. So if you've had that little icon come up on the, the dash and you've checked the tire pressures and they're all okay, maybe it's just a, a temperature change from yesterday to today, so it's seeing a different pressure inside the, uh, the tires, what we can do once we've checked it and there's no punctures in the car, what we can do, press deflation warning system, press initialize, that will allow it to reset, it'll now recalibrate when I start driving and that warning light will have gone out. In the bottom left hand corner of the connect screen is the AHA icon. This is a pre-installed app. It's an audio app and what it allows you to do when you've created an account to listen to podcasts, uh, audio books or even radio stations through the Wi-Fi network because we've tethered it to our phone inside the vehicle. So if you were listening to Radio 1 or Radio 2, whether that's through digital radio or FM, you can listen to it pretty much anywhere in the UK. But if you were in France or Germany, you wouldn't be able to get that. So you could listen to it using AHA and all it's going to use is a tiny little bit of your mobile data. Now because audio is one of the most frequently used features in the Kinect system, uh, we've got a number of ways we can actually choose what we're listening to. We have the audio button on the screen itself. We can press the source button to change what the source of music is going to be. Uh, we've got the hard key on the right hand side of the screen and we can also change it using the thumb wheel on the steering wheel. I'm just going to press the audio button here and what this will do for us is tell us that we're actually listening to digital radio. Now if we wanted to listen to let's say FM radio we can press source on there tap onto FM and we're straight onto it. If we wanted to uh, change the preset, so if we wanted uh, radio one into preset five, we just press and hold number five and that's now into preset five for us. Really nice and easy. Just gonna go back to the source menu just so we can see what we can actually listen to. So all of the radios are at the top. We've got USB. If we're using our iPhone and connected it uh, to the car, but we haven't used CarPlay, it'll see it as an iPod. We can use Bluetooth music, we've got smartphone feature, audio apps such as AHA that we've mentioned, and HDMI. So in the car itself, just down there, we have an HDMI input socket. So anything that has an HDMI output, we can connect to the car. Underneath the audio button is info. So this is where we can get our trip computer and various other bits of information about the car. So the final one on here is now smartphone connection. So at the moment, the car doesn't know whether I'm going to connect an Android phone or an iPhone. So I'll take my phone. Uh, I'm going to uh, get my cable ready and press the smartphone connection button. What it's telling me is that when it's safe, make sure that I'm connecting it using the, the USB lead and that the other end is actually plugged in to the USB port that has a picture of a smartphone on it. Now we're here, it's asking me, do I want to enable this feature once or always? Well, as this is my car, I'm going to go always. So now we've got that, the screen goes into CarPlay and it brings up basically my phone, or at least the features on my phone that are suitable for using while I'm driving. And the final soft touch button on the screen itself is TA. So this is for traffic announcements. This is if you're listening to a radio station that broadcasts traffic programs, you'll see that there by TP, traffic programs, and if you want to get those broadcasts of where the traffic issues are, that'll cut through to whatever you're listening at the time. I don't want that because my satellite navigation system is going to reroute me if there's any traffic. So right at the top of the connect screen, we have a little button here that'll change us through different levels of brightness, whatever we want for daytime, also for nighttime, or if we want to turn that screen off. So we'll pop it back on, and then literally just above that is the hazard switch, a simple push, to turn them on and again to turn them off. So just behind the mirror we have the courtesy light for the passenger and also for the driver. Now in the middle we have a switch here where we can turn these lights off 
uh, or we can have them op actually operating when the doors are open. So I'll turn that off. And there's another little button here, which is if you're going to leave the car with the windows down, ordinarily your ultrasonic sensors would detect the air movement and then it would set your alarm off. So just for this one locking time, you can press this button before you'd lock the car and the ultrasonic sensors will be disabled. But the next time you come to the car, they will be enabled. So it's nice just if you do want to leave those windows down, you can still secure the car and have the alarm on the car for, for doors being opened, those kind of things, but it will disable the actual ultrasonic sensors. So the meters on your dashboard are broken into to three sections. Now on the left hand side, this is where we've got the temperature of the engine. On the right hand side of the, the dash is where we've got our fuel gauge and also the, um, the trip. So we can actually push the button to scroll through trip A and trip B and if we need to reset it, you just push that button, nice and easy. Now, something that often gets overlooked is the icon of the petrol pump has a little arrow pointing to the left. That's just to remind us which side of the car the fuel flaps on when it comes to fueling up the car. You'll also see information in here about uh, whether you've got your auto lights on or main beam, those kind of things. Now, straight in front of you in those meters is where you're going to get your speed. And if you've selected to have it on, the rev counter for the car as well. That is on by default, by the way. Now, we can see our speed is right in the center. It's a digital, easy to read uh, speedo on there. We've got top left, because this is an automatic, we can see if we're in park, reverse, neutral or drive, that will actually come up there. Next to that, we have the little circle that when we've passed a speed sign, will be filled in with a 30 or a 50, whatever speed we're in at that time. And that can be used in conjunction with our intelligent speed limiter. And right at the bottom, we have the external temperature, we have our mileage, whether that's total mileage, trip A or trip B, and then we have a clock in the bottom right hand corner. There are a couple of ways you can actually gain access to the boot on your Civic and opening the tailgate via the little button at the bottom of your key fob if you don't want to unlock all of the doors on the car. But because my Civic's already unlocked, I can just open it simply by pushing on the tab underneath the um, H badge. Now, now that we're inside, we have access to our tonneau cover. Now, most of the time, you're probably not going to need to move this, and this is why it was designed this way, so that you can load and unload the boot really easily. However, if you do need to um, make any changes to the, the size of the opening, you can simply retract it all the way across, and you've got a real big access area. If you wanted it to pop the other way, all you do, you take this unit off, pop it onto that side and you can have it operating in the other direction. Now just to give us a better view inside I'm going to take this back again. Now what we can see are the Isofix top tethers so when we get inside the vehicle we'll actually see the lower mounting points the ones just at the base of the seat there they're for the webbing straps that'll go up and over the seat and give that third anchorage point making the Isofix child safety seats really secure. Moving further back, on the right hand side, on this corner, we actually have a little storage area where we'll find our temporary repair kit, should we have a puncture or something of that nature. So we'll pop that back up again and just turn that at the top. And on the left hand side, what we have is another sort of storage area where we'll find the emergency refueling nozzle. Now, we'll come back to that in a moment. What this allows though, is large storage area under the boot floor, really maximizing the space we've got inside the boot of the vehicle. As well as the tonneau cover being suitable for left and right-handed people, we've also done the same with the boot. So handle on either side that you can either pull down or push down. Providing your Civic is unlocked, then all we do is just push on the fuel flap to open it and we have our capless refueling. So when we pop the, uh, the nozzle in at the petrol station, of course we can start filling. Leave it for about five seconds though after you've clicked off the lever before you take it out. And then it's as simple as that, just close the lid. Now, 
If you ever run out of fuel, there is an emergency fueling nozzle that we've just seen in the boot because it's entirely possible that your fuel can may not actually fit directly into the capless system. So all we would do is fit the little nozzle into the car itself so we can then fill up using a jerry can. So when it comes to folding the seats, the little latch at the top of the seat just allows you to fold this down. Obviously we have a 60-40 split, so exactly the same would be on the other side as well, for the passenger side. And to fold it back up, just the simple action. Now while we're here, we also have the centre armrest, and it has cup holders in there with two different sizes for two different size drinks. So to make sure that any child seats that are in the car, be I-size or I-suffix, are fitted as securely as possible, we have these two points down here where it will actually lock into the physical car. And we saw the top tether point when we were in the boot, and that's where that third point will attach, making it as secure as possible. To activate the child locks, simply push the lever down. Now that means on this rear door, it can only be opened from the outside. If you want to turn it off, this means that it can now be opened from the lever inside and also outside. Thank you for watching this handover video on your new Civic. We hope you found it enjoyable and informative. Now, if you do have any questions that haven't been answered in this video, please contact your local dealer who'll be delighted to fill in any of those gaps for you.